Of that, 980,000 is what's considered available. And this was a fund that in past years drew a, a lot of attention because that level of available fund balance was down 13%, 10% in the past few years. This year it was able to improve to 34%. So you feel a little bit more comfortable in, in the water district fund. And that's important because water fund and sewer district fund maintain infrastructure that's expensive. So at any given time, if something gives way and you need to make an emergency repair, these are funds that you feel comfortable with, and, you know, a nice level of available fund down sitting there. Last fund, sewer district fund, little effect from COVID, sewer continued as, as it does. Revenues came in just above. There were some cost savings with, with some position vacancies. And when it came to the total fund balance, that increased a little over $250,000 for the year. Total fund balance at just about $3.2 million. And that percentage of next year's budget for the available fund balance, this $2.6 million, that represents 60% of next year's budget. And this is another fund where you see that assigned category grow from the past years. There's over $400,000 that was able to be assigned for capital future purposes. Overall observations, I, I try to be brief. The financial statements, there's a lot of information there. So we do, I'm available all the time. My information, contact information is on this last slide. Really, if there's anything that I can help clarify or if you have questions um, or inquiries about the audit, plans for next year, you know, please don't hesitate to reach out. But overall, clean bill of health, we're in a, a positive financial position, the town is with no reportable findings on the internal control side. It really is you know, a nice town for us to come in and audit. We enjoy working with the staff here. Jackie's been great, and everyone that we work with, really. Um, the management letter, we talked about a couple items with management. I think the, the number one comment that we're gonna look to assist the town in the future is helping implement or beef up a fund balance policy. When you have fund balance levels here, to help define what some of those categories are and what the goals are in a general fund, maybe you have a minimum percentage that the town board is comfortable with, and that's what you'll strive for. But you could also talk about when you hit a certain percentage, say as a maximum, what the town's plan would be to spend down or plan use of that fund balance would be. So, I've offered, we do have sample fund balance policies that we've seen be successful in other towns in New York State, and we're happy to share those with the supervisor and director of finance so that, that the town can move forward with their own. Any questions at all? Anybody? I, I have one, just out of curiosity, for the increase in sales tax, how much of that's internet? Uh, that actually, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have. You'd have, have that. Yeah. You know, you'd have to ask the county that. You'd have to ask the county that. What they do is they take all the sales tax from the entire county and divide it by population. Okay. So that's the town of Niagara's biggest complaint because they get all the money from the Vector Law Mall that gets dispersed to all the other towns. So, anybody have any questions? Yeah, I'm curious about the town of Niagara. Yeah, go ahead. I just wondering, as far as trajectory is concerned, would, would you consider the town moving in the right direction at the right rate, or, or is there anything that the town needs to focus on to get us moving in the right, uh, uh, let's say, a better direction or a, a better trajectory? Forward looking, not our position as auditors. Auditors so put that qualification out there. Of course. I think financially, you are in a good position comparatively to other New York State towns. Okay. So while that's set, looking to the policy side, something like a fund balance policy I think is really important. Um, along with that, I think you'll see when you're looking at intended use on the fund balance, a capital plan, forward-looking capital plan for major pieces of equipment or major improvements throughout the town, that's something that would really create a comprehensive fund balance policy because now you're going to have a plan spending for the next five or ten years. Um, those, those purchases are out there. They're going to happen. Right now you need a new truck on the highway every so many years. Sure. You need So those are known. Use your department heads. Gather those needs. 
prioritize them, and now you have a planned capital component in your budget going forward, and I think would be the most valuable at this point. And is that managed in the finance department or through the town board with input from the department? I'd say it would be headed by the board, ultimately, because they set policy. Um, and then it's up to the board how to move forward with the, the ins and outs, talking to the individual departments. Right. I mean, just um, the easiest one is Jeff at the sewer plant. He has the plans for the sewer plant, improvement plans, that we probably do need to do what Carl's saying, is sit down and, and do a three, four, or five year plan. And it is his intent use fund balance for, for some of the projects. I wasn't sure, but if you'd like him to forward those those sample yeah. policies yeah. to me, yeah. I certainly could take a look at them and the supervisor and I and everyone involved could kind of get started on it. Absolutely. And they have the, the critical elements of a successful policy. Of course it's got to be tailored to the sure. town, but it'll be a good starting point. I'd be happy to be the liaison Mr. Supervisor. So. I, I think that would definitely fall on me. <laughs> but thanks for volunteering. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Carl. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Um, I'm going to ask you to take a quick five minute break. Um, I got an email from Tom Seaman that I got to print out. So take a five minute break. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you get that Okay. Good. It's just, it's not something we want to do. And the numbers are good. So I'm moving that sort of well, we'll be sharing and our thumbnail policy samples, and then we'll be sending over soon that representation when everyone that gets put on the letterhead and signed, and then we'll kind of be our last step before we issue finals. Oh, that's
That's where the traffic car helps because I can try to address some of the situations because obviously we're not having you know a ton of fatals. That's part of the problem: speeding and some of the operation that we're having. The biggest complaint complaints that we get are our neighborhoods, are the stop signs and people flying through neighborhoods and not even stopping at stop signs anymore. The, the, the villages in the zoo at the time and you can count when the light turns red in my personal view. If you count one thousand, one thousand two, still still be a and it's getting to the point of summer now with the pedestrians, so we're going to have to deal with that with the crosswalks. But something that we're trying to address, I just encourage, like I said, if anybody's aware of it, we have the signs that we try to put out as well that I think help, you know, the information boards with the, with the speeds on as well and to remind people to stop at the crossings and stuff. But it's definitely gotten worse, notably worse. If you did a blitz and pulled all the crews in and all the cars go in in one four hour period of time, and every Buddy that drove saw that some cars get pulled over. And I said, wait, they're serious about this. Yeah, and we have done that. We'll continue to, again, so get ready because then you'll probably get 20 complaints about the people who got sick. I'll compare from them. the people who got sick. But yes. that's, uh, but I just wanted, if you do know something, especially in a neighborhood or something, encourage people because a lot of times what happens is we'll go to a meeting or have somebody say something later and we're not aware of the problem unless somebody tells us. So I need those calls and we need the feedback to be able to know where we need to target, but it's definitely a problem. 
What's that? Road is still yeah. Thank you, Masters. Anything? Nothing. Check your agenda. Deputy Supervisor Condor, anything? Mm -hmm. Dave Train. Yes, I'd like the board to know we're going to start Tunnel City pretty soon. And I'd like uh, to clean all the noise. There's excess material, no value to the town. And I'd also like to see if I can get contractors to take mailings and train so it will save the labor and truck the cost. So, Dave, Dave. Sure. Dave yeah, they came to me and said he'll keep some of the millions, but he's got he's got enough, and he just wants to get rid of it. Who to declare millions from Mallow City Road as excess, and encourage the I'm superintendent to find somebody else to haul it away. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. But before you go on to that, what's the traffic pattern going to be? What are you working on Bottle City Road? Good close the road. Good close the road. Frank, can you so, use your signs well, well, to alert people? Uh, of, they, I have signs. Right. So I gave I gave you signs. Right. Okay. So we'll 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 signs. Yes. yes. So Modern's way station is going to be handing out flyers and we're going to stop them so all the trucks are aware of it a month ahead of time. But we're still going to have the odd truck or something. It's just, there's nowhere to turn around for <laughs> Thank you. Would you like to volunteer for that one? Yeah, it's not that we're in. <laughs> no, but yes, yeah. I brought Al. Me and Al went around and we looked at showing him a couple different areas. Right. He met me one day when I showed him, explained what was happening and how it was. By law, if I maintain a road for 10 years, it could become worse. Yeah. And John, in addition to that, there's a there's a, a liability, insurance liability. You know, not only if we damage with our, our equipment, their road, Vice versa. Yeah. We want to make sure that we have all of the, the, the legal obligations and, um, and, and, and other considerations mm -hmm. uh, taken care of. So we're basically hoping to start a dialogue. Yeah. And it seems like we're correcting some missteps that have been made along the way. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Everything else is a handshake. Yeah. Sure. No paperwork, no travel. They're not worth much, are they? I was on the board when uh, Oak Hill was approved, and that was a private subdivision. Yes. Private road. This one will deal with. And I asked you a question. How do we put the water line through there? How? I don't know. Okay. How the arrangement to be made when the town allows it, and they have someone else to come and solve it? Okay. That's the situation I'm in, and this is one of those things that are going to be taken care of and addressed with this. Good. Water. It's the 
but that was an exchange to be able to get onto some of the properties to be able to do what the water department or different departments needed to do. Correct. To here, to here, see, that's a perfect example. So for us to bring them water, we had to give them something. <laughs> so my deal was, don't give them the water. They'll call us and they'll, we can go do it and we don't have to pop it or salt it. <laughs> then we'll address that problem. They go without water for a week. <laughs> <That's really fine. laughs> so, well, you know it's an agreement. Sorry. I can find it all. In yeah. writing, if whatever you can yep. find for me would be helpful. The homeowners association had nothing in writing for me. I spoke to them more than once. Okay. Do you didn't say anything? I don't. Jeff Ritter? Uh, yeah, I'd like to uh, thank all the town forces that showed up on Tuesday the 20th. We had a pretty significant rain event. There was a lot of people that were flooded out. We had a lot of people that's basements filled up with uh, with water and raw sewage, and uh, there was a lot of uh, complaints. And the fire department showed up to pump people's basements out, and our crew and the police. So I just want to thank everybody. It was uh, a lot of work on last Tuesday. I think they call Lockport storm a thousand year storm. We always hear the one hundred year storm. They call it. A, I think Tim. Right, you heard that? A thousand year storm. So well, at the plant, we only got four tenths of an inch. So that's hardly any. Um, so I, it was almost right along almost the escarpment. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, okay, thanks, Jeff. Mike Dashino? Nothing? Yeah. Um, Belinda, always. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not going to try to start a farm review at the Senior Center like we've had before, where a uh, local farmer from Lewis and the surrounding area comes and will sell produce to the seniors and anyone else that happens to come by. Um, thus far, I haven't been able to find a farmer that would like to do that, so I'm expanding my search. Um, Mr. Duffy suggested another farmer I could try. I thought it was a great idea. I thought it would be easy, not so much. Also, NICAP, um, Niagara Community Action Program, Suzanne Shears, the executive director, reached out to me. They're looking for a board member from Lewiston to sit on the Niagara Community Action Program Board. If anybody's interested or knows anyone who's interested, um, let me know with lots of answers. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, approval of the meeting minutes for June 28th, board of town meeting. Move for approval as written. Second. Motion and second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Vote. Aye. Um, July 2nd. 2021 special town board meeting for seasonal hires. For president. Second. Motion of second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 July 12th, I move to approve the regular abstract claims of number 21-01688 and 21-01781 and recommend the payment in the amount of $103,112.93 plus a post audit of $7,147.20. And let me do the other one up from 7, July 26th. I move to approve the regular extract of claims number 21-01782 and 21-01956 and, rec and recommend payment in the amount of one million one hundred eighty-two thousand four hundred seventy-three dollars and ninety-one cents, plus a post audit of ten thousand seven hundred and fifty-two dollars and four cents. Second. Motion and second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. Moving on to the Kilmer Solar Farm. Um, I know we had the public hearing the last time. I had uh, an email correspondence on my question with the uh, national fuel on the gas line that I was unaware of. So they require 50 feet from the gas line. It's 80 feet. National fuel had no problems with the solar fund. So they answered one of my questions. Anybody else like to say anything in regards to the solar farm? Well, that, yeah, that's, um, the other thing that, that I'm, I'm going to require of the solar farm is 10 foot trees. I know our um, our landscape plan, plan usually calls for six feet, correct, in our solar usually lawn? Usually the ones that come through proposed are six. 
six feet or seven feet. So because of the unique situation being at the bottom of Timeline Road, um, I'm going to put a, a, a stipulation that they got to be 10 feet, 10 foot trees. Can we get 10 feet trees? You can get 20 foot trees. No, no, I, I'm... Yeah, 10 feet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be excellent. For what? For the 10 foot trees. No, you can require it. Yeah, yeah, you can require it. <coughs> That's good. Anybody else have anything to add? Well, um, I talked to Steve at Tim that I was around looking at the other solar product projects and I was disappointed with the landscaping around the power poles. And that's something we have to address. We have to keep on on these power companies to make sure that the, the power pole arrays are well landscaped appropriate. And I think we also have to include in our motion that the trees will be properly maintained. Yes. Brown dead trees don't act as a very much of a, a visual barrier. So they have to be replaced with something equal to or greater than what is replaced. And they need to be maintained and with something simple as water. Okay, Tim, that, that's a requirement already, correct? It has to be replaced. Anything that dies has to be replaced. And I believe we, we actually sent a note out to the one on Moore Road right now and told them the six of their trees were dead, even though our annual inspection doesn't come up to November. Is that Baringo? No, that's um, it's way over there. Oh, okay. okay. So if we could be proactive and alert them that the trees need to be watered so that they don't have to replace them, they should be responsible enough to do so. <coughs> and just a side note, uh, I was out recently in public and a woman walked up to me and said, I want to commend you on embracing the green agenda. And I said, pardon me? And she says, yes, well, you're encouraging solar projects. I said, man, we do not encourage solar projects. We respond to a property owner who comes to us with the idea of having a solar project. It's up to us to work as diligently as we can to make sure that the solar project, if it is approved, fits in the best it can. But I, my concern is that if we don't work with these solar projects, New York State will take the uh, right privilege of home rule away from us. So we're trying to walk a fine line between the property owner who's asking for the solar project and the budding property owners who are feeling that their uh, quality of life is being modified. But I was taken back by that. Yeah. Yes, Bill. Did you require, or Tim, either one, was it, were there slats that were required in this one? Um, camouflage, basically, slats? That was not Kilmer's. I don't there recall that for Kilmer's. There was, there was a dirt, there was a no, If yeah. I may. Yeah. Yes. Um, you said that you had the slats in the fence. That was one of the initial requirements. Some yeah. had the guy that looked like a bird green that was in there right Tone now. Green? Okay. Yep. Yep. So on the record, Donna, we have slats. Do I want to feel Okay. And, and they also did add landscaping by the powerful National Grid Public. So, I guess having said that, um, we have a sidebar for that. I do have a zigzag question. I'm just not sure what that's referring to. So, we have a uh, um, resolution to uh, for a negative debt and notice of determination of non significance for the Borrego Solar Facility at 4616 Townline Road, Lewiston, New York. Yes, that's I'm sorry. I think Mr. Group, Supervisor Lord says Borrego Solar. I think that should be Saturn Power. Okay. Right up at the top. Yes, Saturn Power. So before you vote on that. Hold on, hold on one hold no no no. Hold on one second. We we, we had the prep public hearing. We had the resident statements my earlier. From the, public hearing. the lawyer was supposed to get back to me and no one ever got back to okay. me. Okay, hold on one second. Hold on one second. So it's Saturn Power. Okay. So um, basically, a resolution for a negative deck of the Saturn Power Solar Facility at 4616 Townline Road, Lewiston, New York. Have we a motion for that? Question. Go ahead. If, if we promise this woman. Well, we'll do that after the, after the negative deck. I'll, I'll move to the negative deck. Okay. Okay. Motion. Do we have a second? Uh, the negative deck. I'll second. We have a motion, a second. Any, any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So that's a negative deck. Ma'am, go ahead. I'm sorry. So I asked 
what would happen with this project since my building permit was already approved to put the barn in and we already started? Will they still have to move it, the existing distance back off our property to build their solar power? Or will they be close and will we have to go back into variance for this? And I don't think, if, if you've already been approved, Tim, her, her barn has been approved? Yeah, I have the building permit for it. But it was after the approval of the solar farm. No, so. no, it wasn't after the approval of the solar farm. This hasn't been approved, and it never went through variance. So, yeah, I guess I guess that you'd have to look into that because how I look at it would be it already went through the planning, it's already been through all the vetting, it's already been through the coordinated review. This is the final approval body. If they move in and put a barn up, how, how do you want to handle well, that? My barn is already started. Yeah. Not like I'm we will talk about it. I'm, I'm, I'm not expecting there to be any, any additional inconvenience to you. But we'll make sure we have to go through the proper, make sure we have all the paperwork in order. Okay, so, so what do I do? Do I continue building the barn? I don't want my animals on top of we'll, the solar farm. Understood. We'll, we'll talk to you right after. Okay. This is for sure. Okay. So having said that, is it, does anybody have any more questions on the solar farm? Does this, have a, does this have an effect on the uh, negative deck? No. No, it doesn't impact that at all. This is more of a zoning. Yeah. So that's, that's would it impact, would it impact the repair? Bill? That's beyond my favorite. Yeah, Bill Conrad? I said in that meeting, I listened to a lot of this stuff. Yeah. This, I, I don't remember the, the barn issue. Yeah, I remember she brought it up. I did. Is that planning? Yeah. yeah, and I remember listening to it, and I, I do seem to think that we had promised a, a response to her. I think, is, is your concern that you'd have to move your barn? And your, oh. No, I'm not going to move my barn. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's because mine's already started. Yeah. And I don't want to put my animals on top of the solar farm. And I, I thought we did a lot of, we talked about it a little was bit Was the more. question to Mr. Dax or was it to Mr. Seaman? It might it have been. The whole board. No, no, no. You said the attorney. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Dax. Was he was looking into it. There was, a com there was a comment that was made at, at the last public hearing, it was right at the end of it, which she had said that she had a farm. My assumption had been that because it requires a permitting that those two had been had been engaged together, at least the, the powers that he had considered where her barn was in reference to the solar farm, um, and that they were they were addressed at the appropriate time. I, I wasn't the last town board meeting, so this conversation is new to me right now, but when this came through the planning, all the dimensions from the existing buildings were addressed, right? right. right? So. Setback, All the setbacks for the properties, right? So, so I, I guess the question comes into play is, in in the meantime, between this came to the planning, and now when it finally comes to the town board, which is quite a distance away, if somebody comes in and does a a barn in that setback, is the burden on the solar farm before their approval to move the solar farm now to adjust to her barn, or is it the solar farm has already down the road this far, plans are done. At the time they came to the planning, it was not, and then she's allowed to put her barn there, but the solar farm doesn't have to move. Right. It, it, there's there's, just, there's a element of moving to a nuisance, so to speak. Right. But that that's different. I, I guess my question is, how far is her barn from? I don't know that answer to that. I, I don't either. How about she knows? <laughs> um, um, it comes down another. 70, 80 foot from the existing barn to cover the other pastures. So yeah. 70, 80 feet closer to where the existing barn is? I don't know where it is. It's farther down. It's farther down. It goes farther to the barn. It's closer to the gas. I'm completely unaware of this. Okay. By 80 feet from the prior building? Yes. So it's an 80 foot difference. So I would, I mean, we, we, we talked about it later, but I would, I would think that it would be insignificant to the solar application because it would be an application that came after this was already in process to be approved. Do you know the date you filed the building permit? 
They didn't tie up two weeks. They have two meetings in the one week. Because it really, and I think for Zach, when we go to for Zach, it's the same night as the environment. I went to Pat 30. Why would we get an hour? Why would we need an hour? Yeah, but then why? We only need an hour, right? No, I don't know. We're going to make a motion to go into executive session to talk about this for the So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? We'll be right back.